Hi, my name is Lisa Kaltenegger here at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy in Heidelberg. And I want to tell you today about a really exciting discovery that we just recently announced. The planet, or two planets actually, that are our best candidates so far for planets around other stars that could be Earth-like, a discovery by the Kepler mission. How did I come to be part of it? Well, I met Bill Peruki, the PI of Kepler, in one of the recent science uh, conferences, and he said, Lisa, there's something really interesting, and do you want to help us with it? Because I'm an expert on atmosphere, especially for rocky planets, and whether or not those planets then can provide conditions to provide good conditions for life, and also how to read, with a telescope, signatures of life in such atmospheres. And so I started to work with the Kepler team because these two planets are actually the smallest planets we have so far in the habitable zone of their own star, so their sun. And if you have a look at this diagram, you see why we're so excited about them. Kepler 62e and f fall in this mass radius diagram into an area where it's very hard to actually make mini Neptunes. So most likely these planets are actually solid planets, potentially with a substantial amount of water. And you see that in the shaded regions here in this diagram. You see the line for rocky planets with substantial water, and you see the line for an Earth analog composition, just changing the mass of the planet. Now, Kepler really doesn't give you the mass of the planet. What it does give you is the radius of the planet. What for both of these planets is actually below two Earth radii. The cutoff that we usually use to say above it is most likely mini Neptune, below it it's most likely a rocky planet. And in addition to that, we also know the radiation that they receive from their sun. What puts them for the first time as solid planets within the region that we call the habitable zone of another star. So what is this habitable zone that many people keep talking about and also in science we keep discussing about? Well, if you have an Earth-like planet and you move it to another star, there's a certain distance where it's just warm enough for liquid water on its surface. If you go too close in, it's too hot, the water evaporates. If you go too far out, it's so cold, the water actually freezes. And the region where it's just warm enough for liquid water on the surface is how we define the classic habitable zone. So now, if you have a look at this diagram, you see that it's very sparsely populated with planets in this really interesting region, the habitable zone, because it's just really hard to detect planets that far out from their star. So that is just warm enough that you could have liquid water on the surface. And you see that Kepler itself has only detected so far four planets within this habitable zone that are actually, in addition, small enough that they could potentially be rocky planets. And really, it has only detected three because the fourth one, Kepler 22b, is just too big, so it's 2.4 Earth radii. Therefore, it's more likely a mini Neptune than it is a rocky planet. But you see that these two planets, Kepler 62e and f, fall in this habitable zone. And they are smaller than two Earth radii, so they are really exciting candidates. And up here you see also Kepler 69c. That is a planet small enough to be a rock, just within the habitable zone, meaning it's a bit too hot, but it has error bars that might allow it, if everything goes well, to actually be in the habitable zone. So they don't know the star that well. And so in this diagram, for the first time, we actually have planets with known radius small enough to be a rock. And that's one of the milestone discoveries. And it's very, very exciting to be part of this, our real search for the next Earth out there. And we're getting exciting candidates for future missions that can detect some of that light and actually read the spectral fingerprint of these planets to determine whether or not there's really water on these planets and maybe even signatures for life as we know it.